H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. So everyone in the class, uh, you're able to see the presentation? Okay, good. So let's get started. So first thing, uh, any application, let's talk about uh, this. So the agenda for today's uh, class is, we'll try to understand uh, what are the different types of applications, what are the types of applications that we have, and what are the different testing scenarios that we get in real world applications, and why we have to focus on database testing, and topics included in this course, we will see what we are going to learn in this, and also, what is the difference between structural database testing and functional database testing, right? Now, so primarily, if you talk about applications, so there are like UI applications where a tester will completely focus on testing the UI functionality, right? So uh, a product owner or the business owner will get the requirements, will give the requirements, and developers will complete the coding, and testers will perform testing based on the UI functionality. So they don't care what tables are there in the database, and they don't care how the functionality has written. So the main goal for a tester is to ensure that the functionality is as per the requirements or not, right? So let me open Notepad. So first, how uh, manual testers uh, will perform testing is, so in real world projects, you get the requirements from your client or product owner, provide requirements, and from this, so that's called requirements specification document. Right. So in some companies, we call it as a requirement specification document. Or some companies, we call it as a functional, spec functional specification document. So from this, the first step is developers will do. So what developers will do from a requirements document, they will create high level design document. Design document. But what testers will do from the requirements document, so they will create test case document with all the scenarios. So the testers will create test case document and developers will create high level design document. Now what tester will do is they will go through this document clearly and all the UI scenarios they will document in Excel sheet and they'll put scenario uh, like navigate to this URL and sub scenario enter user ID and password and uh, expected result, actual result is a test case pass or fail. So like that, a tester will create a test case document, manual test case document. So once developers completes the coding, tester will test for all scenarios and they will do it. So that is called a complete UI application where a tester need not worry about, tester need not worry about what is the internal uh, functionality or internal tables that are involved, right? Complete UI testing. Now, so some applications and most of the applications will be uh, 50 to 60 percent of the applications will be on complete UI applications. Now, coming to next one is UI plus database applications. So where a tester should also know about how uh, uh, internally details are getting saved in database. So now let, let's talk about that for some time, right? So in some cases, where there will be some there will be some web pages where you only have you you're only done with the save functionality you don't have uh, search functionality is done let's take one simple example let me open uh, let me open ms paint now your client has asked for your client has asked for um, let's take what two screens the first screen he wanted to be delivered by uh, by this week and the second screen your client wants it to be delivered by so uh, maybe maybe after two weeks so after two weeks or after three weeks so the first one is let me increase the font size the first screen that your client is expecting is 
save user details. Now here you will have uh, like first name, some fields will be there, user fields will be there. So let me enter some uh, commonly used uh, fields here. So let's talk about this here. So enter first name and last name and uh, some details like qualification or some details, uh, email address and, and then you'll have a save button, right? Now your client wants this page this week, by this weekend your client wants this page, address, okay, one of the students is saying address, like this you'll have some fields and your client is expecting this by this weekend. And there is one more screen which is having like search user functionality, search user details. Okay, now, now if, if developers are done with this module and they want to uh, deliver, put it in deployment, so how do you think testers will test it? So because this module is not yet done, so if you notice here, this screen is, is not yet completed because your client only wants save user details and how do you think testers will test this functionality? Everyone. So we don't have a screen for testing it. So how do you think testers will test it? So once you click enter these, enter these values in the text box and once you click on save button, once you click on save button, so how do you think uh, testers can test it? whether it's getting saved properly or not. Everyone, please ping me. So we don't have a screen for a search user functionality to test it. So I got the answer from Soma, very good. So the only option for you is you have to test it from the database, right? So like this, I have worked on multiple projects where, where there are some screens where you don't have immediate uh, search functionality or where they don't bother search functionality now, but they want to save functionality now. So in that case, tester has to be very good in writing queries. In uh, not only queries, tester should uh, completely be aware of what can, what is the primary key, how the column structure is, so what is uh, identity column. So because why uh, testers, see I have worked on uh, multiple projects for over 10 years now, I, I see where uh, testers are really strong in SQL, they write uh, queries, they write joins, so they retrieve data, data from other table and they populate in one table. Because you, as a tester, you should perform testing in multiple ways. You should enter some uh, dummy data, sample data, invalid data, so different scenarios you have to test it, okay? So an effective tester should not only be good in manual testing or automated testing, should be more than good in database uh, testing where you have to be comfortable with writing joins, all those details as well, right? Now, now this, we are going to learn how to write different queries, how to write joins, how to write uh, uh, triggers, all those things we are going to learn in this course. Now, after this training, so what are the outcomes from this training, right? Let me open Notepad. And so you'll understand what is a functional and a structural database testing. So functional and structural database testing. And you can apply for either QA jobs or you can apply for DB testers, database testers, or you can also apply for SQL server developer roles. So this training is primarily like 40% will be on testing side and 60% will be on. So this training primarily 40% on uh, testing side, it will guide you what is testing, functional testing, uh, structural testing. So I'll give you an example for what is st uh, structural testing, all those details. Parallelly, you will also learn how to, uh, how to uh, SQL server developer also. Right, so one of the student is asking uh, to repeat it. Okay, now, after this training, database testing, this training, so you can apply for QA jobs, manual QA or database testing jobs. Also, you can also apply for SQL Server developer roles. See, most of the times we think, uh, I mean, this course will be in-depth about database uh, SQL Server development as well, right? So you will understand it. So 40% will be primarily on testing side and where uh, you will get uh, good confidence about structural testing, all those details. And 60% of this course will be on SQL server development side, 
development side where you will uh, you'll be able to confidently write queries confidently write stored procedures functions uh, you'll understand how the code is written by developers um, where you can also suggest developers like what is the mistake in the logic also so to that level because nowadays testing uh, the meaning of testing is completely getting changed from manual testing to uh, automated testing uh, selenium tools etc also database testing this database knowledge is must for all the testers all the QAs right okay now not only this even in my team where BA all of you heard about BAs everyone please think what is BA stands for let's see who will ping me perfect so I got the answer first answer from Archana and uh, Joshna very good so BA stands for business analyst so business analyst So as a business analyst, also you have to be really strong in, you have to be really strong in database development, right? So that's also very much required. So I have worked on multiple BAs in different teams uh, where they are really strong in writing queries or they're really strong in database. Uh, see, if we get, a, if we face any issue, they will immediately tell in this table, in this column, you're facing some issue. So that 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 expertise in uh, with BAs or QAs with come with uh, practicing on database as well, right? So I'm not trying to do any marketing here, but I'm just uh, suggest, uh, telling you that how uh, current market is and the demand for uh, understanding structural uh, database uh, knowledge, right? Okay, now with this, what we will do is, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, now. So first we understand where a tester need not worry about the database that the first one complete UI application where UI plus database where the tester should have idea about database where you don't have screens for testing uh, you don't have screens for testing backend so only way is you have to go log into database and write some queries that's the second way now coming to the last one which is pure database applications where you don't have any screen at all so the only way for you to test is from the database itself. Even the application itself is complete database application. So what are the examples for this, right? Okay, let's see this. Let me open MS Paint. Now let me show you. So I, uh, in one of the projects, banking projects that I worked on, so if you see here, they maintain different environments. So banking projects maintain different environments. So first one is actually development environment. And let me increase the font size. Okay. Okay, development environment. And the next environment that we will have is called QA environment, right? So let me put this. So QA environment. And the next environment that we will have in real world projects is called, this is called pre-production environment. Right, so I'll tell you why we need all this environment, environments, pre-production environment. This is also called as a staging environment. And the last one, everyone please think, what do you think is the last one? Everyone in the class, please think, what do you think is the last one? I got the answer from Archana and Soma, very good. So the last one is definitely the production environment or a live environment, right? So let's put that, live environment. So you might be wondering why do we need all this thing? See, when a developer completes the module, he will put the code, just a second, let me take marker, just a second. Okay, now let's come back. Okay, now if you see here, when a developer completes the functionality, so he will put it in dev environment and he will test it. Now, once the developer is done with the development, he will, so he will move the code to QA environment. So QA is main, mainly used for testers. So what tester will do is they will perform testing for functionality right so once this functionality testing is done when developer is doing testing that's called self-testing 
when a QA is doing testing, that's uh, that's called when if any issue comes here, he will report in a tool. Like there are different tools that uh, pay, that we'll be using in um, real world development. Like, have you heard about any tool called Jira tool? Anyone in the class? So there is a tool which is used for which is used for logging tickets. Logging tickets. This is a very famous tool, and there are so many tools like this, bug tracking tools, right? So where a tester will log a ticket and assign it for developer, and the developer will um, work on it, and once developer is done with that, he will close it, or he will he will send it back to the tester, and tester will uh, retest it, and if he thinks that the functionality is working, he will close the ticket, else he will reopen the ticket, right? Now, so that's about, th that testing will be done in QA environment. Now, what is the use of this pre-production is? So pre-production environment is primarily used for performance testing. So when you talk about performance testing, let's see this now. So in QA environment, let's take in live environment for a bank, Amex bank. Let's take Amex bank. In real world bank, Amex bank, you'll have around 1 million customers. 1 million customers. So when you're doing development uh, environment database testing or QA testing, you don't really put 1 million testers, 1 million records in your database. You only test for the functionality. So what you will do here? you will create a, let's take your, you're talking about mini statement or detail statement. So mini statements mean last 10 transactions. So there will be a button called mini statement and you will click on it. It will show you the last 10 transactions. So that fu that functionality only developer will test it in unit testing. And developer, a tester will test for the functionality, but they don't care about how long it's taking, uh, when I click on uh, this button, how long it's taking to generate. That will that testing will be done in staging environment. Or in some in some companies, we will separately have some servers for performance testing, right? So why, so in this case, here in, in development and QA environment, we'll have just around 10 to 20 records, or 30 records, or up to 100 or 1,000 records for testing functionality. But in live environment, you'll have 1 million records. In pre-production also we'll maintain same 1 million records but with with some dummy data. So I have written some, uh, those are called, just a second, those are called nightly bills or nightly jobs. So what these nightly jobs will do is, they will copy the data from live environment when the load on the server is not there, like night 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock, when the load on the server, when users, minimal number of users are accessing the servers, we will copy the code from, we will copy the database records from live environment to, let me select it, from live environment to pre-production. So that will be done every day. So when we are copying it, we will hash the, see, when we have here credit card details, debit card details, or personal details, we don't directly copy it but we will hash them with some uh, hashing logic. So then we will copy the records. Okay, this is called nightly job. So are you getting it? Why we need to do it is just to ensure that to maintain both this the same, uh, same atmosphere, same environment. Everyone in the class, do you understand why we need to copy every day? And you might be getting why we need to copy every day. So the reason why uh, uh, we we copy this every day is let's take for example today uh, here uh, here today thousand customers are there in production and here also we have thousand customers. Now imagine the next day uh, uh, the bank had provided some offers. Okay, bank provided some offers and almost like two thousand new customers have registered. So here you will have three thousand uh, three thousand uh, records, but here you'll only have thousand records. So when you want to do performance testing, both environment should have uh, both environment should have same number of records. Otherwise, here you will get uh, you will get one second. The page will load in one second. But when you go to production, since you have three thousand records, you will, it will take two seconds. So for seamless testing, we need to ensure that the number of records in uh, pre-production and production should be same. Okay, now I got a question, but performance testing has to be done before it goes to live environment, right? Then how can we copy from production environment? Okay, the question is right. See, performance testing, we are not doing here. We are not doing performance testing in live environment. We are doing performance testing in pre-production environment. Okay, so do you guys understand? 
Now I got a question. So pre-production has real data. It will not have real data, but it will have real number of data. So here if you have 3000 records, here also you will have 3000 records. We will maintain it every day. But these are not real data. These are hashed data. So do you understand what I am trying, uh, what I mean by hashed data? Everyone in the class. See, when you have here first name, let's take first name. We have here Mike and uh, let's take Jones. So here in this first name and last name, we have Mike Jones. When you're copying it here into this, we'll add some, we'll append it to some data. So ABC, we'll always append with ABC, Mike uh, or PQR Jones like this, we'll copy. So we'll not copy as it is because this is a uh, production data and this is a customer sensitive data. So we should not copy from here to here as it is. So in case if credit card number is there like this, like this, we have some credit card number in uh, here. So we'll just hash it. So when you're copying it, we will generate some unique code and we'll put like this. Uh, some random numbers will copy it. So that way of, uh, that way is called hashing. Okay. Now, now I got a question, how will maintain uh, data in production? So in production, how will we maintain? See, in production definitely we'll have some backups also. So in production you'll have one server and you'll have one backup server and multiple backup servers also we'll have, right? Anyway, so now do you understand why we need four environments? All of you please ping me. Okay, now, so which environment we normally perform uh, performance testing? Everyone, we have four environments. Where do we do performance testing normally? So normally we'll do performance testing in pre-production environment. Pre-production environment, third one, not in live and performance testing. See, anything testing, we will do it in pre-production. Okay, and then once testing is done, we will move it to live environment and we will test there also for some time. So that's why, have you seen any websites like, uh, have you faced any time like, uh, uh, we are under scheduled maintenance, uh, sorry for the inconvenience uh, like that. Have you seen any message like that? All of you? Our website isn't scheduled maintenance. Sorry for the inconvenience. So why uh, they do is, so uh, once they're done with the live test, performance testing, they will move it to the live environment and they will test it for half an hour or one hour. So they don't take like four days, five days. But four days, five days, you can take it in pre-production. Okay, so this scheduled maintenance also they will do it at midnight where the load on the customers will be very less. So 11.30 midnight or uh, 2 o'clock midnight they will do it because they don't want to bother customers. End of the day customers should be happy and is, see imagine you want to do an urgent fund transfer for someone and if website is down you feel you feel like disappointed, right? So for that reason banks will perform all this maintenance when the load is very less, right? Okay, now Let's come back. So now I have written some code. So now I got a question. So who does uh, that kind of testing? Uh, double, testers only will do it. So testers only will do all types of testing. See here, uh, QA testing will be done by testers. And let just a second. So QA testing will be done by testers. Performance testing will be done by uh, testers using some automation. And live environment testing also done by the testers only. Even in live environment, testers will do it. So what they do is uh, select the testers. They will uh, see when I worked for a project, how it happened was uh, at midnight, two o'clock, uh, some testers, they will work on the night shift. And what they do is in the live environment itself, they'll create some dummy accounts. See in live environment itself, they'll create some dummy accounts for testing, right? Like that we will uh, perform testing, right? Okay. now. Now what happens is I have written a tool which will copy the code every day from records from here to here. So in that case, I need to verify the number of records here is more or less same like number of records here. So how do we verify? So there is no UI at all here. The only thing is you have to write some count star from or you have to write um, how many records are added today. So like that you have to write some queries and you have to test it. So that type of testing where only you have to do it uh, only through database is called completely DB testing. So where you don't have any UI. So you have to depend on whether the records are copied properly or not. 
right? So anyway, uh, just to come back to the presentation, so normally complete UI applications will be there or UI plus database applications where you need to depend on both UI and database or if you are like data push jobs or SSIS packages if you have, so you have to do testing only through DB, right? That's called ETL testing. So yeah, so ETL stands for extract, transform and load, right? Okay, so anyway, so now let's come back. So for that reason, as a tester, you have to be really clear with uh, all the details of uh, writing uh, queries, testing, all those details, right? Okay, now let's come back. And definitely data is critical. Let's take, for example, a banking website. If a customer table got deleted, so do you think, uh, do you think the bank can survive? So if customer table is gone, that's it, bank is gone. Right, so definitely data is critical and we cannot imagine any web application without database. So data is critical. Now I got a question. In ETL testing also we write uh, test in database only. Uh, that, depends on, uh, that depends on project to project. In some projects they will have UI, in some projects we don't have UI. So, so you have to write queries in some projects. If you have a UI screen for some uh, tables, you can test it from the UI, okay? Now, let's come back. Now, what we are going to learn in this, so you can actually, uh, as I told you already, now, this class is recorded, yes. So they will provide this recording for you, right? Okay, now, as I already told you, 40%, uh, I think I need to modify this, 40% will be on testing side and remaining 60% on the development side based on the recent uh, uh, feedback that we received from previous students we used to modify the syllabus as and when uh, frequently. So now more focus is uh, will be there on the development side as well in this course. So you will be able to learn a lot of things and let me take one simple example and explain you. Let's see this now. So how many of you in the class know what are the types of commands we have in SQL? Okay, let's uh, discuss about SQL for some time because we discussed about types of testing, all these details, right? So next five minutes, we'll only discuss about SQL. SQL commands. So how many of you in the class know that uh, there are four types of commands? DDL commands, DML commands, DCL commands, and TCL commands. All of you, do you guys know it? Now, anyone in the class, uh, Anyone in the class can volunteer and tell me what uh, commands belong to DCL. Who wants to answer? Please ping me. I will unmute you. What commands belongs to DCL? I got one answer from Harika. Very good. Anyone else? Anyone please ping me what commands belongs to uh, DCL, data control language. Okay. So, I'm getting uh, some students are saying commit and roll back, uh, some students are saying uh, grant and revoke, and okay, now. So today what I'll do is, the next five minutes, I will explain you, and you should never forget this, you should never forget this category, right? So let's see this now. So I got the right answer from Archana, and, and okay, now, everyone see here? Um, I will explain for the next five minutes types of commands and you have to remember it forever, right? Let's see this now. So first thing is DDL. DDL stands for data definition. So data definition language. So this tells, this defines how your table should be. So that this doesn't deal with the data because you are defining how you are, see data definition language, you are defining how your table should look like. So here, the commands that deals with is that deals with the table and not the data, right? So here, create your creating table, alter your altering table, drop your dropping table, and one more truncate is there. We'll not discuss about it now, but for now, let's keep it truncate. Truncate is like refreshing the table. So all these commands deals with the table. You're creating a table and not data. So data definition deals with how you work with the tables. And coming to DML data manipulation language, data manipulation language. So data manipulation language deals with data, selecting data, you're selecting data, inserting data, updating data, deleting data. So that's why it's called data manipulation language. So again, 
When you deal with the table, it's DDL. When you deal with the data, it's DML. Now coming to DCL. When you join a new project, data control language, when you join a new project, your DBA should provide you access. He will have the control. He will have the control for database. So he will grant you the access. So data control language. So your DBA will provide you access using grant command. And once you're done, your DBA will revoke the access. So grant and revoke will your uh, deals with data control language. So your DBA will have the control and he will provide grant. And once you're done with the project, he will revoke your access. So that's why it's called the data control language. And coming to TCL, TCL stands for transactional control language. Transactional control language. Now, so what is transactional control languages? Let's take, uh, let me open MS Paint and let me open new uh, MS Paint. Let's see this here. Now in this, let's take a simple example. You are having, your, you want to transfer money to your friend's account. So let's take this as your account and you want to transfer money to your friend's account. And your account is having uh, a balance of, let's increase the font size. So your account is having a balance of $9,000. Let's assume that. And your friend's account is having a balance of $4,500, right? Now, now you're transferring, let's take $1,000 to your friend's account. So you're transferring $1,000 to your friend's account. So how many updates should happen now? Everyone, when you're transferring $1,000 to your friend's account, how many updates should happen? Everyone in the class, please ping me. How many updates? Some of you are saying one update. Some of you are saying, see, number of updates. Okay, let me, let me answer you. First update should happen is, the, there are two updates that should happen. Only two updates should happen. The first update that should happen is, your balance should become $8,000. And the second update that should happen is, your friend's account should become $5,500. Everyone agree with me? Okay, okay, so, okay, my question is only in this case here. So you have to transfer $1,000 to your friend's account. The first update should happen, your, your, your table for your account, it should become 8,000. For your friend's account, it should become 5,500, right? So imagine if this is gone, your account got 8,000, but this is failed. So will you be happy? So for some reason, this update is failed. So definitely you will not be happy. So both these updates should happen together. Okay, now let's take a reverse way. If this failed and this happened, so your friend got the money, but your account is not directed, will you be happy? So I'm sure all of you will be happy. So definitely, so your friend says he got the money, but your money is still there. Okay, so in that case, bank will not be happy, right? So here what should happen is both the updates should happen together. If any one update fails, you should roll back all everything else. So, so if multiple updates are happening together, we call it as a transaction. So what is a transaction? So a transaction is group of commands. A transaction is group of updates. So if any one update fails, you should roll back all other updates. So that's what we call it as a transaction. So if everything, if all updates are successful, we'll commit the transaction. If any one update fails, we'll roll back all the transactions. So, so that's why TCL commands deals with transactions. TCL stands for transactional control language. So if all updates are done, we'll commit it. If any one fails, we will roll back. So commit and roll back belongs to transactional control language. Right? Okay, let me tell you once again. So anything that deals with the table, DDL, anything that deals with the data, um, um, manipulating data, selecting data, inserting data, updating data, and deleting data, it is DML. And grant and revoke controlling, your DBA will have, so DCL. And transactions, if you have to commit or you have to roll back. So everyone, are you clear with this category now? Everyone in the class, are you clear with the category? Okay, now, transaction is group of commands. A transaction is group of commands, right? Now, now I lead a volunteer in the class, so uh, let's make the class interactive. 
So I will ask five commands and the student should tell it belongs to which category. Now let me open notepad. So let me open notepad. Now everyone see here, I will ask five commands one by one and the student has to tell it belongs to which category. Anyone in the class is confident? Let's take, I will, I will ask update. Student has to tell it belongs to DML. Updating a table. If I ask you create, creating a table, not data, so it's DDL. So anyone in the class who is confident, please ping me, I will unmute you. And you should not have any background noise. Okay, so now I got uh, one of the student, uh, Sarita said yes, and I'm, I'm getting multiple answers. The first I got from Sarita. So let me unmute Sarita and let's see if she answers correctly. And take it easy if you go wrong, okay? We are just learning and take it easy, right? So let's see this. Just a second, let me unmute uh, Sarita. Uh, Sarita B. Okay, there are a couple of Saritas in the class. Let me unmute. Um, yeah. Hi, uh, Sarita, can you say hi? I'm not able to hear you. Let me increase my volume. How about others? You are able to hear Sarita's voice? Okay. Okay. I think there is some issue with the audio. Uh, let me check with the second student. Um, okay. Just a second. A second student who said... Um, just a second. So how about... Uh, okay. One more Sarita said yes. Uh, let me uh, let me check with uh, one more. Hi, uh, Sarita, can you say hi? Okay, I'm not able to hear. Okay, let me check with the third student. Harika said um, she will answer. Let's see if Harika, we can hear Harika's voice. Maybe uh, there is some audio problem. Okay, we'll see if it doesn't work. We will, um, okay, just a second. Hi, um, Harika, can you say hi? Hi. Yeah, everyone, uh, you're able to hear Harika's voice? Please ping me. Okay, good, they're able to hear. Okay, now I'll ask uh, comments, let's see if she answers, and take it easy if you go wrong, okay, Harika? Yeah. Yes, sure. Yeah, so the command is alter. Uh, DDL. Very good. And uh, commit. Uh, TCL. Very good. Drop. Uh, DDL. Okay. Select. DML. And last one for you. Update. Uh, ah. DML. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much, Harika. Yeah. Okay. So I think your kid is also interested in answering. <laughs> okay. Good. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, so everyone, is it clear? Types of comments. Okay, okay. So now uh, let me introduce about uh, myself. So we'll uh, we'll stop here with this. Uh, this is just a demo class. So we'll stop here. So uh, my name is Meghnath. So I have around um, I have around ten years of IT industry experience. I I started my career uh, with Infosys Technologies. I worked for four years, and then I worked in um, Accenture for two years. I worked in Cognizant for two years. I worked in Deloitte as an architect for two years, so almost like uh, one year, one and a half years. So almost I have like 10 years experience in IT industry and I i am associated with H2K for quite a long time now. So I take multiple uh, uh, trainings with H2K and this is one database testing. And uh, definitely I'll ensure that whatever we are discussing in the class will be clear and uh, all the topics, you will be confident about SQL once you're done with this training, right? Okay, so that's all for today, and uh, thank you very much for joining this demo class. And I and any questions, we'll we'll wrap up in five minutes. So I got a question: Does H2K Infosys conduct database testing course? Yes. So database testing course, we are planning to start uh, sometime this week, or um, uh, starting of next week, we will be starting it. Okay. Now I got a question: uh, Is it project uh, project based? So database testing is primarily like uh, I will be explaining different scenarios which are used for you. Uh, for learning or uh, real-world examples. So all these details I'll be explaining for you, right? So projects normally will be done in development uh, like .NET or Java, but here I'll give all real-world scenarios which will help you to understand, uh, to implement it, or to clear the interview questions. 
and uh, I got a question is it possible uh, what topics will be covered okay so in our website heads to k infosys uh, let me one of the student is asking uh, what topics are going to cover just a second so in this website if you want to understand uh, what are the topics that we are going to discuss so you can go to um, h2kinfosys.com and you can go to uh, courses and here you can see uh, database testing okay now I got a question on uh, what is the duration of the course DB classes so it's one month course and uh, every day we'll have class for one one hour 15 minutes so one hour to one hour 15 minutes and every class will be recorded and what other courses do I teach? So I teach uh, .NET, Database Testing, and Java. And uh, okay, so what is your experience as uh, experience for QA? See, I I am uh, basically a lead project lead. I have managed different uh, different roles. So uh, I have worked with teams where uh, four testers are there in my team and uh, four developers are there. So I have taken, um, okay, and uh, does it cover, does it cover under QA testing? Uh, you need to check with uh, H2K, uh, so they will call you by uh, today or tomorrow. Okay, so regarding fees and all, you can check with the H2K. So anything related to course uh, topics, you can ask me. Okay. Now, do we need to have Java knowledge? No, you don't need to have any um, any Java knowledge here, right? Okay. So, any other courses uh, you can check with H2K, but only uh, only regarding database testing, you can ask me questions if you have. So, okay. So, any tool to be downloaded? Yes, we need to install SQL Server uh, software. I will provide the guidance for you. Okay, so another student is asking, is it a new course? Yeah, I think we are planning to uh, start now. So I have taken long back, but not uh, recently. Is SQL knowledge sufficient for the course? Yeah, you don't have to have any previous knowledge. I'll be teaching from the basics. Do you have uh, classes on weekend also? Uh, we are planning to have on Saturday, but if students say no, we'll not have uh, Saturday classes. So only Monday to Friday we'll have. If everyone is fine, we can, we'll plan for Saturday as well. So before having class on Saturday, we'll check with the students. Okay, and timings we are not yet finalized. Uh, based on the comfort uh, comfort level of the students, we'll decide the timings. So, uh, okay. Okay, that's all for now. And uh, uh, the regarding the link for everyday classes, you can check with, uh, I mean, H2K will communicate with you. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you uh, very much for joining and uh, good night, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Um, I'm seeing everyone's chat so one of the student is saying uh, let me check if Agni um, I'm seeing all uh, chat just a second I might have missed it missed your message so can you teach uh, performance of dotnet applications with VSTS uh, no for now we are, we are focusing only on uh, database testing course in case if you have any other requirement you can drop a mail to h2k and uh, based on um, a demand for it we will start uh, with it okay so that's all and uh, thank you and good night